okay, people are watching me, so I'm gonna try to make this quick, but I, I, I don't know. I have a lot to say because a lot of you, like myself, are in your first bull market. I have some notes, by the way, so if I look down, it's just so I make sure I hit everything because I don't like being out here talking for that long, given that I have a fuck ton to film and, like, people on their balconies around me, but there's some things that you know, with this being other people's first bull market, or maybe like bull market 1.5, if you count the first part of 2021 and then the middle of the year intermission type thing. Um, a lot of you probably entered like I did in 2020. I started buying Bitcoin summer 2020, got really into trading late 2020. A lot of you know my story and it's been about a year now of like seriously tracking things in this space. And I had to learn incredibly fast. I like was a public figure like immediately kind of once my TikTok blew up alongside my Bitcoin calls and other crypto like shit popping up and having my trades, my calls, and even like my wallets just like completely out in the open, you know, it made me learn things really quickly. And I wanted to make an honest video about what I would have wanted to know about a year ago and what I still need to remind myself about on an ongoing basis because in my opinion, we still have about two months at least of this continuing on. Um, I do have caution for the end of the year. I don't see like a multi-year bear market necessarily, but I do see some kind of a correction at the end of the year that I'm prepared to take a lot of profits for. And, you know, I hope I'm wrong that we keep going up forever, whatever, but you know, by 2022, there's gonna have to be some, some blood in my opinion, and I don't wanna be everyone's exit liquidity. So either way, there are some things that I wanna talk about keeping in mind for anyone who's like newer or this is their first bull market um, because I think that a lot of people are well-intentioned but not a lot of people like step back to be like if I was a beginner this is what I would have wanted to know I am still like the blind leading the blind like I am absolute noob leading absolute noobs but I feel like I have some grasp of noobdom 2.0 so the first thing that I really want to talk about because in my satire like this has been a theme where I'm like don't sell but in reality hodl or holding on for dear life will make people a lot of money in the long run but also is kind of a meme to keep you poor what I mean by that is that you know someone who bought Bitcoin at $300 and is still holding to today you know huge gains congrats like happy for you most likely you forgot about it or just don't have a way of selling or something but also someone who bought at like 2015, 2016, sold at 10 or 20K, bought back a year later, or bought back two years later, 2019, 2020 at like three or 6K or something, they are outperforming just holding. So there is an incentive to not just hodl and to possibly look at beating the market and most people will not. There's a good book called The Little Book of Common Sense Investing by John C. Vogel that talks about how index funds for the vast majority of people are just buying and holding big baskets of stocks or like in crypto, you know, just buying and holding Bitcoin. Most people, they will outperform the market trying to beat it. They, like, they, they will outperform people trying to beat the market by just holding is what I mean. But I'm not saying that I don't hodl some things. Um, I know plenty of people that are extremely wealthy and they're very grounded and are just like, I buy and hold and I don't sell. And there's a certain temperament for that. Um, in this cycle, I think a lot of people are going to get very burned by doing that because I mean, there are some things that I plan not to sell for a long, long time. Um, in my opinion, like I've talked about this before, like literally all my wallets, like what I hold out in the open. I think that Soul DeFi is what I feel like I am early to, and so I don't want to sell. That is Mango Markets, that Step, that Serum. I feel like that ecosystem will keep growing, and I've never been early into anything. So like seeing a chart that looks like a fucking barren wasteland, I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna ape in, like hold this for dear life for a couple years and see what happens, and that's like Soul DeFi for me. But for me, I don't want to be the person holding the bag to zero. I want to be buying at zero and selling at 100. And I am eager to make up for lost time just out of being young and outperform the market. And I'm willing to fuck up in the face of everyone and lose everything if it doesn't work out. But I'm willing to put, put in the effort and take profits when I think they're tops and buy back in when I think that there's bottoms. TLDR, most of you will make more money through holding long term. But if, like me, you're into tracking markets, you're into looking to outperform, maybe, I like to say, like, if you prefer wealth, 
maybe you want to take profits when you hit crazy returns. I know that there's been some things that I traded. I got good five, maybe even like near six, six figure profits. And I took those and I don't regret that. Even if there's some, I've never had anything where I take profit and it's like skyrockets right after necessarily. I joke around and there's small trades where that happens or whatever, but I don't know. I'm new enough to where I've never been really badly burned. I've never been like super liquidated or anything like that. And I don't think, for example, someone who sold at 55K Bitcoin, bought back at 30K and is now holding, it's like a bad, that's an amazing trade. I would rather have that than buy at 55, hold through and right just now make like a 10% return. Um, I think that they're a good trader and hodling sounds really good in theory for a lot of people and for most people it will be the best option because most people do not want their life to be around simply making money and being the market. I like to gamify myself and try to do that and I like I don't have enough size to impact the market so I'm open about like my trades and calls and whatnot like I do not have enough size to dump on you all like my trades do not impact the market so I'm pretty open about when and how I'm going to sell when that happens but I am not telling you when and how to sell I just know I'm a profit maximalist and that's why like I I think I've said this before even though I started out my journey holding a lot of Bitcoin, right now I hold like 1.5 Bitcoin and it's in like a staking pool, like lent out, like it's not even, I don't know, I, I don't actively hold very much Bitcoin. I hold like one and a half and everything, everything else I have is either in ETH, Solana or Sol DeFi basically. Whether it's trading, I mean, I go in and out of Bitcoin trades, uh, but then mostly I funnel that into other things. I take profits, I put that elsewhere and I do that because I don't want to be someone's exit liquidity and I don't mind not being able to say that I didn't buy at 300 and sell at 55k etc like it's your chase choice how to manage your portfolio but there's going to be a lot of people that tell you that the market is going to go up forever that are hyper bullish on their Twitter timeline but that like I've seen them in like I don't know like telegram groups or whatever and they're like I'm cutting positions here and I'm like dude but you're tweeting hyper bullishness I don't know I'm not someone to do that I don't have time not to be transparent so right now I'm bullish like very much so until the end of the year you know there'll be some small pullbacks whatever but my way of managing my portfolio is looking at taking profits along the way up buying back at dips and cycling into smaller market cap coins and people have said this so it's nothing new but the way that the market tends to work is US dollars go into Bitcoin Bitcoin profits funnel into Ethereum, Ethereum profits funnel into large cap altcoins, then mid caps and small caps, etc. And it's not super clean, but it's intuitive because the deeper that the profits go, the more that they're going to go towards like niche markets. And what I do essentially is I'm flipping those profits. Uh, I didn't start out trying to do this, but it did end up this way. And that's kind of what stuck me, got me sticking around with seeing these returns was I like Bitcoin pumps. I take my Bitcoin position profits. I found them into Ethereum. Mostly, I, I don't do that too much anymore. I did that 2020 into 2021. Now I'm like heavy Ethereum. I take my Ethereum profits, and this is kind of what I'm still in the process of doing, is taking Ethereum profits, funneling that into large cap altcoins. You all know that I'm really passionately, like Solana is what I think is the best, and I funnel a lot of money into Solana. I also like Phantom and Cosmos, and um, randomly I'm in like a one harmony trade. I don't know what the fuck that does, but uh, also that and uh, IOTA. Like I think I'm gonna enter IOTA. <laughs> It looks like it hasn't pumped yet. It looks really clean. I don't know what the hell these things do. But uh, yeah, I, I whenever, like, for example, Solana pumps, I take some of those soul profits and I funnel that into soul DeFi. So again, that's Serum, that's Step, that's Mango. There's other things like Ray or whatever. But I don't like holding a ton of positions. I have Occam's Razor tattooed on me. I like a select amount of what I have high conviction in. And I hold some Bitcoin. I hold some ETH spot like HODL. Like, I'm not going to touch that. But besides that, I'm rotating in and out of positions. Uh, mostly Solana, ETH. Ethereum and like I said right now like I'm in a polka dot long, like literally like a ton of what I have is in a polka dot long because I'm pretty high conviction on this right now and a harmony one position as well and I might enter iota but if you're like me and you're into moving capital around efficiently it's not an easy steady straight shot you will lose money along the way but think about rotating your profits down into more niche plays and then once you make profits on those niche plays put it back into the base layer like Ethereum or Solana etc so like right now with large caps like Soul and Phantom really performing well in my opinion, looks like we have, could have some mid and small cap altcoins shooting up soon as well. And I do scalp a lot, like the way that I have my daily, how I pay for things on a daily basis is literally how well I scalp Ethereum. 
or Solana sometimes, but like mostly the past few months, it's been like, okay, every day you need to hit this on Ethereum, boom, that's your like daily what you have. And um, I'm waiting, I'm putting more of that profit towards some of these altcoin positions recently because I really don't think we've seen them run up on a mid to small cap yet. Some of the L1s have, but mid to small caps we haven't seen. And, you know, I, I, I do want to show like if these things really work out because I think it could be a pretty crazy return. And it'll be cool if I get to show that because like, I don't know, I'm a noob trying to show noobness winning. Uh, but another thing that I think other people have talked about too, but I, it is important to illustrate because people tell me this a lot is like diversify, like crypto, you like you want to diversify into other things. I recently bought a property. People were like, good job on diversifying. I was like, bitch, I wasn't trying to diversify. I'm just an earth sign and I like to fucking have shit. So I wanted a place, but diversification protects wealth and concentration builds it. What I mean by that is that if you have like 10K and you put 1K in all these different coins, nothing is going to tank your portfolio, especially if none of the coins are correlated. Similar if you have 10, 10 different stocks that are uncorrelated, diversification means that one could moon and you might make like 12 or 15K instead of like 10K. Like in, from 10, you go to 12, 15K if 1K moons. If 1K does a 2X, then you make, you make, you know, 12K essentially or 11K, whatever. With concentration, let's say you have your 10K and you put it into two things. There is more risk of your portfolio nuking, but also if something does a 2X, you've doubled your portfolio essentially almost or something like that. I don't know, I'm just throwing math out there. Uh, the more that you concentrate, the more wealth you can build or lose. The more that you diversify, the more you're protected against gains or losses. And I am someone where I would rather concentrate heavily, lose it all, and be open to that than diversify and play it safe. I am not interested in holding much in an index fund. I have my fucking retirement money in that every year, and that's about that, just so I can be like, I have a little something in some, like, whatever, the VOO, like, S&P. I... Like, had I put everything into Phantom at sub 20 cents when it was like first shilled to me, I'm sure I would be a fucking gazillionaire. But also, if I had put if I had put everything into Chainlink when it was over fifty dollars, I would have less than my net worth right now. So, I'm not like a concentration maxi where I I concentrate to like an up teens degree, but I do think that concentrating mostly is what is going to, if it works out, make me most of my money because I do believe in Solana DeFi. I don't have time or capital to concentrate into multiple ecosystems. I think Phantom and Cosmos are promising. Best of luck to you all if you focus on those. I'm focusing on Solana, even though I have, like I said, a random Harmony One position. Like, I don't know what the hell that is, but it looks promising. Um, I do not want to hold that many positions. I concentrate into like around five substantial positions. Even five positions feels like a lot, but I mean, I think I'm gonna take some Ethereum and put it into IOTA soon, so that's something that I wanna do because scared money doesn't make money in my opinion. None of my winning trades have been because I had low conviction and barely put anything in. It's because like I had high conviction and was like, hold your breath, this looks promising, you know, you kinda know your TA. I mean, I don't give myself enough credit, I feel like, but like in this space, another thing is that you will see people making crazy money and you might not be one of them, but respect and like, be happy with your own gains. Give yourself credit. Like, I have made money in the past year in this space. None of it has been through a crazy 100x. There's been maybe some small 10x positions on like meme coins, but nothing I've had has been some crazy substantial trade story. Nothing has been crazy size. It's all been literally like profits recycled back into Ethereum. You know, early summer 2020, that took a hit, but I wasn't really worried. Um, I knew it would bounce back at some point and I could have put everything into Sheeb, then a fucking gazillionaire. Maybe that was a very high, very low IQ play. But some people in this space have been here since 2017 or 2013. They have millions. They can enter along on barely any leverage, make hundreds of thousands of dollars on a 3% move and exit and are good for a few weeks. Um, you, I, I don't, I, you know, I don't need to trade as much as I do, but I want to. And my gains are still nothing where I have some like crazy big story. I just little by little on doing this. And so... Don't get insecure if you see crazy stories and you're just holding Bitcoin and making those gains, holding Ethereum and making those gains, or like me kind of recycling shit coins. That whatever your PL is, is your PL. Um, my money is my, my, my gains are my gains and I'm proud of that. Even if that means that I lost out on like doubling, you know, I exited Phantom at like $1.50 and now I trade in and out, but um, I'm not upset about that. Like it's $2.50, I might re enter or whatever because it does seem undervalued. But 
your PL is your PL. I have friends that are great traders that trade very different than me, very similar than me. And I like I'm just gonna share that and maybe you all can make some money along that too. I, I again I don't really care to dump on you. I get really annoyed when people think that whenever I share positions because I can dump. I was like, bitch, I don't think my like five, six figure position could have fucking dump on you. Like I'm not doing that. But I do think that any amount of gains, like be happy with that. Don't be afraid to take profit. Even if you're early, like I was seeing a video of someone, it was them trading last year and BNB was at like $17. If they had held that, that would have been a ton, but who's not to say that they outperformed holding that by trading in and out positions? Like, I don't know, your PL is your PL, and maybe that's the best through hodling. Don't feel pressured to hodl. If you have profit that you really wanna get off the table, get that off the table. Um, five, six, maybe even seven figure profits that are life changing, get those off the table and don't be like, I'm not saying this to buy back from you. Like again, I don't have size to fucking like mess with this. There are times when I hodl, there are times when I take profit and don't be afraid to do either no matter what, you seeing on, what you're seeing on your timeline. I think a lot of it is psyops. I can see what these people do on Twitter versus what they do in real life. And some of them are literally, they're, they're front running their own trades because they know that they want to dump. Basically, yeah, trust. I don't know what to say trust because, I mean, maybe you're not someone into TA and maybe hodling is the best choice, but I do want to say that your strategy is your strategy, your gains are your gains, and as we enter this bull market, don't be afraid to exit and not be someone's exit liquidity because I want all of us to win. Not all of us will, but a lot of you are going to make unrealized paper gains and never take them out and make actual money. So diversifying will protect you. Concentrating will skyrocket or nuke you. I'm going to be concentrating and sharing that along the way um, as a fellow noob in this like bull market 2.0 kind of thing. So I hope that this is helpful. Do let me know down below any tips that you have, whether it's your like third bull market and you have shit to share or your first and you have questions so I can address them in other videos. More tips and things coming out on like crypto and technicals and things like that because I think I have an audience that like is interested in that and I don't need to be afraid of like just sticking to astrology. Like if I have shit to share that could financially free people, I should share it. So yeah, um, with that being said, sending all the love and I will see you in the next one.